welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen, and let's get started by singing our hello song. When we sing hello, we will salute, and when we sing friends, we'll take our two fingers and have them give each other a hug. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good job. Today, we are talking about bedtime. Bedtime is one of my favorite times of the day. I love cleaning all the day's grime off my body, getting in my cozy PJs, curling up under my blankets with a good book and my cat, and drifting off into my dreams. Do you have a bedtime routine at home? Do you wash your face or take a bath at bedtime? Do you brush your teeth? Do you put pajamas on and then read a couple books? Maybe sing a couple songs? Do you talk about your favorite part of your day? Or maybe something that you hope will happen tomorrow? Or something you're excited for that's coming up tomorrow? What's your favorite part of your bedtime routine? Why don't we learn a couple of words using American Sign Language to help us talk about bedtime? Let's start with bed. What letter does bed start with? B, B, bed. Yes, bed starts with the letter B. B is for bed. B. To sign the word bed, we'll take both of our hands together and lay our head on them as if they're our pillow. Bed. Good job. Now that we're in bed, we can go to sleep. What letter does sleep start with? It makes a sound. Sleep. Yeah! Sleep starts with the letter S. S is for sleep. S. To sign the word sleep, we'll take our dominant hand, the one that we use for eating or for writing, and we will put it over our face and close it as we pull away. Sleep. Sleep, kind of like you're dragging your eyes closed gently. Sleep. Good job. So now we're all tucked into our beds. We went to sleep and it's time to dream. What letter does dream start with? D, D, dream. Yes, dream starts with the letter D. D is for dream. D. For dream. To sign the word dream, we'll take our pointer finger, we'll put it up to our forehead, and then we're going to pull it away while we bend, straighten, and bend our finger. Dream. We want to make sure our finger ends bent, like the letter X. Dream. Dream. Good job. There are so many great books about bedtime. I had a lot of trouble picking some today. So we're going to read four books. But before we get into those books, let's sing our alphabet together. You can pat along at home, you can sing along with me, or you can sign along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. 
Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. Our first book today is called It Is Not Time for Sleeping, a bedtime story by Lisa Graff and Lauren Castillo. Let's read the inside flap to see what this book is about. As the day comes to an end, bedtime draws near. But the little boy in this book is quite sure it is not time for sleeping. As each piece of his evening routine is completed, he becomes a little more certain. It is definitely not time for sleeping. The question is, when will it be time for sleeping? Hmm. Let's see. It is not time for sleeping. A bedtime story. It is not time for sleeping. When I've munched and crunched my last three carrots, except for one I fed to Jasper, Mom takes my plate. It's been a good day, she says. It is a good day, I tell her, because the day is not finished yet. And it is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over, Dad runs water in the sink. I squeeze the soap and make bubbles. It's getting dark, he says, while he scrubs and scrubs. It could be darker, I tell him. It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed, I get in my bath. Jasper tries to join me. We only splash a bit. Better get out soon, Mom says. I stretch my wrinkled toes. Just a little longer, I tell her. It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed and I'm squeaky squeak clean, Mom zips up my pajamas, the ones with bare feet. I roar at Jasper. Don't you look cozy, Dad says. I stretch my tallest stretch. Not too cozy, I tell him. It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed, and I'm squeaky squeak clean and zipped up to my chin. Dad holds me by my ankles while I brush my teeth. Top one's on bottom and bottom's on top. Getting tired, silly goose? Dad asks my feet. I yawn and upside down yawn. <sighs> nope, I tell him. It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed and I'm squeaky squeak clean and zipped up to my chin and my teeth are shiny, I say goodnight to Jasper. He licks both my ears. Yip, he yips. I rub him on his belly where the fur is fluffy soft. Almost, I tell him. It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over, and the dishes are scrubbed, and I'm squeaky squeak clean and sipped up to my chin, and my teeth are shiny, and I've said good night to Jasper. I climb into bed. Mom tucks me in with the covers smooth and tight. You look ready for a good night's sleep, she says. I blink my heavy eyes, open, closed, open. Maybe soon. I tell her, 
It is not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed and I'm squeaky squeak clean and zipped up to my chin and my teeth are shiny and I've said goodnight to Jasper and I'm tucked tight in my bed, Dad reads me a story. I snuggle down under the covers to listen. That was a nice one, he says when he's done. I tug the blankets up past my nose. Hmm, I tell him. But it is still not time for sleeping. When dinner is over and the dishes are scrubbed and I'm squeaky squeak clean and zipped up to my chin and my teeth are shiny and I've said goodnight to Jasper and I'm tucked tight in my bed and the story is done. Mom turns off the lights. All I can see is the glow from the hall. It's really, truly bedtime, Mom says. I rub my eyes. Not yet, I tell her, very soft. Not until one more thing you both forgot. Mom and Dad lean in close. We'd never forget they say, and they hug me tight. Good night, sweet darling, they whisper. We love you. I stretch out comfy in my bed. I love you too, I whisper back. Good night. And I close my eyes, because now, now, now it is time for sleeping. The end. Sometimes it can be hard to just turn yourself off and go to bed at the end of the day. That's why having a bedtime routine is really helpful. It helps get your body and your mind ready to rest for the night. And resting makes us strong and healthy and ready for the next day. I have a song about a bedtime routine, just like the little boy in the book. Let's start by washing our faces. Can you pretend to wash your face? This is the way we wash our face, wash our face, wash our face. This is the way we wash our face when we get ready for bed. Mmm, our faces are so clean. But we still have to clean one more thing. Hmm, what is it? Our teeth. We have to brush our teeth, don't we? Brushing our teeth helps us stay healthy. And it's always great to wake up in the morning with a clean mouth. So let's get our toothbrushes ready. Can you put some toothpaste on them? And let's pretend to brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth when we get ready for bed. So fresh and so clean, but I'm not quite ready for bed yet. I still have a couple things to do in my routine. Hmm. Something I like to do to help me get ready for bed is to brush my hair. No matter how short or long your hair is, brushing it not only helps to untangle it, but also helps to keep it healthy. Yeah. It spreads all those necessary oils around so your hair grows strong. So let's brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair, brush our hair, brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair when we get ready for bed. Good job. My hair feels so smooth and shiny, but I'm still not ready for bed yet. I can't just go to bed in the same clothes that I wore today. I don't think that would be very comfortable. 
I want to put on my pajamas. Let's put on our pajamas. This is the way we get dressed up, get dressed up, get dressed up. This is the way we get dressed up when we get ready for bed. Good job. Oh, they're so soft and cozy. I think it's time for me to get cozy in bed. Let's cuddle up in bed. This is the way we cuddle up, cuddle up, cuddle up. This is the way we cuddle up when we get ready for bed. Oh, I think it's almost time for bed, but I know I need at least one story before I can sleep. Can we read a bedtime book? This is the way we read a book, read a book, read a book. This is the way we read a book when we get ready for bed. I think, oh, mm -hmm. I'm ready for bed. Can we say, this is the way we go to sleep? This is the way we go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. This is the way we go to sleep when we are ready for bed. Good job, friends. I have some friends here that are also ready for bed, but I think they might need a little bit of help. First, let's get rid of this alphabet. Okay, now we have plenty of room for our friends to get a nice night's sleep. Let's get their bed set up. It's a nice big bed and it needs to be big because we have a lot of friends that are going to try to fit in this bed. Can you help me count the friends as we put them in bed? One, two, three, Four, five, five friends in the bed. Mm, that looks like it's really tight in there. I'm not sure that it's so comfortable. What do you think, Red Ted? Are you comfy in there? No way. Five in the bed and Red Ted said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and who fell out? Yellow fell out. Ouch. Poor Yellow. But there's more room in the bed now. How many friends do we have in the bed now? One, two, Three, four. Hmm. Red Ted, is there enough room in there now? No, it's still too crowded. Four in the bed, and Red Ted said, Roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over, and who fell out? Orange fell out. Well, there's a lot more room in the bed now. How many friends do we have in the bed now? One, two, three. Hmm. Red Ted, is there enough room in the bed now for you? No, it's still too crowded. Three in the bed and Red Ted said, roll over. Roll over, so they all rolled over and who fell out? Green fell out. Ow! Well, there's a lot more room in the bed now. How many friends are in the bed? One, two. Well, I think that 
looks like plenty of room. What do you think, Red Ted? No, it is still too crowded. Two in the bed and Red Ted said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and who fell out? Purple fell out. Ow! Well, looks like there's plenty of room for Red Ted now. How many friends are left in the bed? One, just Red Ted. Well, Red Ted, are you ready to go to bed now? You have plenty of room. No, I'm lonely. Aww. One in the bed and Red Ted said, come back in, come back in. So they all climbed in. One, two, three, four, five. And they said, good night. Good night, little teddy bears. Sleep tight. It looks like Red Ted wanted cuddles a little more than he wanted space. Let's let those guys go and get their sleep. They're very tired. And they have a big day tomorrow. So, shh. Sleep well, little buddies. Our next book is called Max at Night by Ed Veer. Let's read the inside flap to get an idea of what this book is about. Max is tired and all ready for bed. But when he can't find the moon to say goodnight, he sets out to find it. But it's not as easy as Max had hoped. Hmm. Do you think he'll find the moon so he can say goodnight and get some sleep? Let's see. Max at night. Max at night. This is Max. It is way past Max's bedtime. Max is very sleepy. Max has drunk his milk. Glug, glug. Max has brushed his teeth. Brush, brush. Max has cleaned behind his ears. Scrub, scrub. Now Max is going to say good night. Good night, fish, says Max. Good night, box, says Max. Good night, spider, says Max. Good night, moon, says Max. But the moon is nowhere to be seen. Moon? Moon? Where are you, Moon? Says Max. Maybe I'll see Moon from outside. Max steps out into the starlit night. Good night, night, says Max. Have you seen Moon? But the night is dark and quiet. Maybe I'll see Moon if I get a little higher, thinks Max. Max tiptoes carefully up onto the sleeping dog. Good night, dog, whispers Max. Have you seen Moon? But the sleeping dog is sleeping. Maybe I'll see Moon if I get a little higher, thinks Max. Max climbs up a tall, tall tree and creeps out along a branch. Good night, tree, says Max. Do you know where I can find Moon? But the tall, tall tree 
only rustles in the breeze. Max climbs even higher, up among the rooftops. Good night, rooftops, says Max. Have you seen Moon? But the rooftops are silent. Hmm, maybe if I get much higher, thinks Max. Maybe from the tallest building? Max climbs up, and up, and up. Good night, tallest building, says Max. Can you see Moon? But the tallest building says nothing. Oh, Moon, where are you, Moon? Says Max. Max is very tired but he climbs up even higher to the highest of the high hills where the wind blows cold and strong. Good night, Hill, says Max. Please tell me, have you seen Moon? But the highest of the high hills just whistles in the wind. Max has had enough. Where are you? Up on the highest of the high hills, the wind hears Max and blows and blows and blows the clouds away. And there, full and brilliant in the night sky. Moon! Good night, Max, whispers Moon, and thank you very much for coming. Good night, Moon, yawns Max. It's been a long, long night. Now I can go to bed. Max, calls Moon across the night sky. Did you know that I can hear you when you say good night at home? Oh, says Max. Now you tell me. Well, thank you. That's very good to know. Max is tired and happy. He walks back along the rooftops and clambers down the tall, tall tree. Max creeps carefully over the sleeping dog. And sleepy, very sleepy, he climbs the stairs to bed. Sleep tight, Max, says Moon. But Max doesn't hear. Max is snoring, 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 fast asleep. The end. I am so glad that Max found the moon and was able to say goodnight. And I'm so glad to learn that the moon can hear us when we say goodnight to her from our very own bedrooms. So, since she can hear us, I actually have a little rhyme for her. Can you guys help me out with it? We have a couple of hand movements to do together. Let's start by making a big circle above our head. This is the moon. Big yellow moon, you shine so bright. You glide across the starry night. Look down on me sleep in bed and whisper good night sleepy head big yellow moon your time is done here comes mr morning sun i wake up mm. 
and you go to bed. Good night, moon, you sleepy head. Good job, friends. Thank you for saying that rhyme to moon with me. I also have a little bit of a stretch for us to do. If you'd like, you can stand up with me. For this little movement, let's be kitty cats like Max in the book. Meow. Hello, little kitty cats. Kitty cat, kitty cat, turn around. Kitty cat, kitty cat, touch the ground. Kitty cat, kitty cat, show your shoe. Kitty cat, kitty cat, I love you. Kitty cat, kitty cat, climb the stairs. Brush your hair. <laughs> kitty cat, kitty cat, turn out the light. Click. Kitty cat, kitty cat, say good night. Good night. Meow. Good job, little kitty cats. Our next book is called Sleep Like a Tiger. It's written by Mary Loeb, and it's illustrated by Pamela Zagorinsky. Let's read the inside plot to get an idea of what this next book is about. Does everything in the world go to sleep? A not-so-sleepy little girl asks her parents. Tiny snails curled up like cinnamon buns in their shells. Colossal whales swimming slowly in circles in the ocean. Does everything in the world go to sleep? Hmm, that's a good question. I wonder. Sleep like a tiger. Sleep like a tiger. Once there was a little girl who didn't want to go to sleep, even though the sun had gone away. She told her mother, I'm not tired. She told her father, I'm just not sleepy. They nodded their heads and said she didn't have to go to sleep, but she had to put her pajamas on. She picked out her favorite pajamas that matched the night sky. I'm still wide awake, she announced. Her parents said that was fine, but she should wash her face and brush her teeth. So she did. It felt good to be nice and clean. Then, because she loved climbing into her bed, she did, stretching her toes down under the crisp sheets, lying as still as an otter floating in a stream. Does everything in the world go to sleep? She asked. Yes, her parents told her. Our dog is sleeping right now curled up in a ball on the couch where he's not supposed to be. And the cat is fast asleep, stretched out in front of the fireplace, the warmest spot in the house. What about bats? She asked. They don't sleep. Not at night, her parents agreed, but during the day they fold their wings tuck their heads, and sleep hanging upside down in the safest place in the barn. Do whales sleep? she asked. Yes, they swim slowly around and around, 
in a large circle in the ocean and sleep. Tiny snails? she asked. They curl up like a cinnamon roll inside their shell. Even grizzly bears? she asked. Bears are mighty sleepers. They make a cozy den under the snow and sleep through the winter. Oh, winter? That's too long, she said. Most animals just sleep through the night, her parents told her, tucking her in. I know an animal that sleeps a lot, the little girl told them. What animal is that? her parents asked. The tiger in the jungle. When he's not hunting, he finds some shade, closes his eyes, and sleeps. That way he stays strong. Her parents nodded. Sleep is good for that. Then they kissed her, turned out the light, and stood in the doorway. I'm still not sleepy, she told them. We know, they agreed. You can stay awake all night long. They left her door open a crack. The little girl's bed was warm and cozy. A cocoon of sheets, a nest of blankets. Unlike the dog on the couch, she was right where she was supposed to be. She wriggled down under the covers until she found the warmest spot, like the cat in front of the fire. She folded her arms like the wings of a bat. She circled around like the whale. And the curled up snail. And she snuggled deep as a bear, the deep sleeping bear. And like the strong tiger, fell fast asleep. The end. This next song is one that probably most of you know, but we're gonna add a couple extra animal verses. This song is called Row, Row, Row Your Boat, and if you like, you can row along with me. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Ah! Let's row right past that crocodile. Whew. Row, row, row your boat gently down the Nile. If you see a nice camel, don't forget to smile. Camel. Let's see what else we'll see on our little boat trip. Row, row, row your boat gently down the river. If you see a polar bear, don't forget to shiver. Brr. It's cold here. Let's keep moving. Let's get someplace a little warmer. Row, row, row your boat gently down the creek. If you see a swimming mouse, don't forget to squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. Hello, little mouse. Row, row, row your boat gently towards the shore. If you see a tiger there, don't forget to roar. Roar! We have one more verse. Let's slow down a little bit for this one. Row, row, row your boat 
gently down the stream. Wearily, wearily, wearily we snuggle up and dream. Good job, friends. I bet you can make up even more verses for that song. You should try it at home. Let's move on to our last book. This one is called Sleep Dream. It's written by Jonathan London and illustrated by Lauren Eldridge. Let's take a peek at the inside flap and see what this book is about. Night is falling. A steam whistle softly calls. A yawn begins. It's time to slip under the covers and catch the sleep train. I count the 10 sleepy cars instead of counting sheep. And I'll count those cars until I go to sleep. Sleep train. Sleep train. Sleep train, jiggling down that track, ten sleepy cars going clickety-clack, with an engine in front and a caboose in back. Sleep train, chugging down that line, ten sleepy cars, and one of them is mine. There's a tender, that makes one, and a boxcar, that makes two. There's a tank car, three, and a cattle car, two. Listen to the cows going moo, moo. Listen to the whistle going choo, choo. There's a hopper and a gondola, the prettiest blue. There's a flatbed car, that makes seven, and a coach with seats. And there's a dining car where everybody eats. Now so far, that makes nine. Nine sleepy cars rocking down that line. Sleep train, jiggling down that track. But there are 10 sleepy cars going clickety clack, followed by the caboose in a moonlit red. And I'm in the sleeping car, all cozy in bed. The sleeping car, that makes 10. I count the 10 sleepy cars. <sighs> again and again. I count the 10 sleepy cars instead of counting sheep. And I'll count those cars until I go to sleep. Tender, one. Box car two, tank car three, cattle car four, hopper five, gondola six, flatbed car seven, coach eight, dining car nine, and the sleeping car. 10. I count the 10 sleepy cars. <sighs> again and again. Like a lullaby heard in a dream, soft as a pillow in a moonbeam. I 
count the sleepy cars slower and slower. I count those cars till my eyelids lower. Sleep train snoring down that track. Ten sleepy cars going clickety. The end. We have one more song before we say goodbye. This is maybe my favorite goodnight song. It's called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And maybe you guys can make little twinkling stars with me. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. story time today. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a good time. I hope that you did too. You can check our website for updates and for schedules about the other story times. And if you stick around after goodbye, I do have a craft for us to do. But first, let's sing our goodbye song. We're going to wave and we're going to clap. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Bye, friends. Today we're making Starry Night Mobiles. For this craft, you'll need a piece of paper. I picked blue, but you might want to pick white or a different nighttime sky color. You'll need a pencil and some scissors a couple different colors of paint. I picked black, purple, yellow, and white. You might also prefer to use crayons or markers or colored pencils. Some stuff to paint with. I'm going to use some leftover bubble wrap as a stamp. I think that old sponges would also be a good tool to use for stamps for this project, but you can also just use a paintbrush your fingers, maybe a Q-tip. Look around your house, see what you have that can be recycled for a fun art project. You also need some string or ribbon or even dental floss, something to hang your mobile up with. And optionally, you can grab some yellow scrap paper and a glue stick. So we wanna start by painting our starry night scene. So whatever you're using, if you're using something for a stamp or if you're just going to paint on top of it, maybe make some swirls, some dots, mix those colors up. And once you're done painting, we're going to want to let that dry completely. And in the meantime, if you're going to want to add some stars, some extra stars to your night sky once it's all finished. You can take your yellow scrap paper and draw some stars on there or maybe ask an adult to help you and cut them out and put them aside for later. Now that our paint is nice and dry, we'll want to flip it over and draw a spiral on the back side of the paper using our pencil. Then we're going to cut out our paper following the spiral's line. You can use your pencil to poke a hole in this top part here, this center piece. And that's where we'll put our ribbon or our string. So you'll cut a length of string or ribbon and feed one end into your hole from the painted side to the back and knot it back there. Then repeat that process with the other 
side of the ribbon. You can also secure those ends with a piece of tape. The goal is just to make sure that they don't slide back out the hole. Now you have a nice little loop that you can use to hang your mobile from a hook or a light fixture, ceiling fan, curtain rod, anything you can find to hang it up on. If you cut out some stars for your mobile, go ahead and take them and glue them onto different pieces of your spiral. And now you have a beautiful Starry Night Mobile to guide you into your dreams every night. Thanks friends, have fun.